Within this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and work with the stat power up, the stat counter, and the stat creator to go ahead and create our own custom stats here inside of UEFN that can be used inside of Fortnite. Now, there are a couple of caveats and things that we'll need to know, so go ahead and be taking notes as we do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is going to look like here inside of the game. So if I go ahead and press the button, you can see that this goes ahead and activates the power up and you can see that that actually changes on the stat counter. As soon as the level, which is down here on the left side of this reaches level five, we'll get some VFX. On the right hand side, we have a little section that shows the quote unquote experience. So you can see that I've got two experience, three experience. And as soon as I get to that third experience, I go up another level. We can continue through this till we get all the way to level five. And then by that point, we'll actually get a VFX that will fire in the background. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how this is actually created. Let's go ahead and start with the stat power up. So I'll go ahead and just drag this into the world and go ahead and lift it up off the ground. Now, over here inside of the details panel, you see we have a stat to apply. If I go ahead and open up this enumerator, you see we get a giant list. Now, this first section in the list corresponds with the stats that are by default inside of Fortnite. The last two actually correspond with this specific stat creator that we've already added to our world. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at how this is connected to the stat creator. And to do that, we're gonna need a stat creator. So let's go into our content drawer and go ahead and grab a stat creator and drag it in. Now, the first thing that we wanna look at is the actual stat name. In this case, we're gonna be working with experience points and levels. So let's just go ahead and name this stat right here, levels. And in fact, let's call it my levels. So we have something really specific we can look for inside of the actual stat power up. So inside of the stat power up, we'll go ahead and select this. Underneath our dropdown, you'll now notice at the very bottom, we have the My Levels. This was added because we added in a new stat creator and that is the stat that we actually named it. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can add experience as well as levels. And this is achieved inside of the actual stat creator device. So right here, we have our max value. You can think of this as our experience points. So let's go ahead and toggle this one on. And just like the example from before, let's set it up so that we need three experience points per level. Now down below, we have a max number of levels. And again, just like the example before, let's go ahead and set this up so that this is a total of five levels. Now, when we go back into our actual stat power up and look at our stat to apply, you will notice that we have our experience right here and our levels right here. So because we're gonna be adding experience points, we're gonna go ahead and use the my levels. However, if you wanna go ahead and boost your players just a full level, use the one with the levels in parentheses. So for experience, we're just gonna use the my levels. Next, let's go ahead and run a quick play test to see how this is actually working. And before we do this, to make it a quick play test, let's go down to our time to respawn and go ahead and set this to a value of 0.25. So it'll respawn really quickly whenever we walk over it. Then go ahead and just push the changes. And once the game is loaded, we'll go find our device. Now in the bottom left-hand corner, we're looking at the My Levels section. So every time we pick one of these up, we should see our experience go up. So there it is. Cool, so it looks like it's actually working and we're actually going up levels as well. And we should be able to get to level five and it'll just be totally and completely done like so. So we've reached our max level. So cool, we know that this section of our code is actually working. Now let's move on to working with the actual stat counter device. So we'll just click and drag this into our world. And it is a little bit small, so I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it and make it a little bit larger and lift it up so that we can see it. Now, we don't necessarily need this to see this actually working, but this is helpful for players so that they can see what they're actually working toward. Now, inside of the details panel, we have this stat tracked. And if we go ahead and open this one up, you'll notice that down here at the bottom, we have our my levels. This is the value that we were actually changing. So let's go ahead and use this. Now, just below it, you'll see a broadcast events on stat changed. Now, remember what we're looking for right now is simply just a value. Remember over here inside of our stat creator, we're actually working at the max value. So for this example, we're not going to need it. So we can completely ignore it. Next, we have our comparison value. Now this comparison value is going to be the same one that we have right here in our max value because we want three experience points to go up a level and we wanna be able to show the player that they need three experience points. And this is a value, so we'll go ahead and change this to be the same value, which is three. So once they get three of them, they'll go up a level and now they can actually see that on this display. Now down here below, we have our value override type. Now we don't wanna have this as set, we're gonna change this to add. That way it'll work like a counter. Now let's go ahead and event bind our stat counter with our actual stat power up. So to do this, make sure that the stat counter is selected. Then go ahead and come down here into the functions and underneath our override value, we'll go ahead and add in an array element and go ahead and use the eye picker to go ahead and choose our stat power up. 
and we're going to go ahead and set this value so that it is on item picked up. Next, we're going to do the same thing with our compare stat. So we'll go ahead and open up an array element, go ahead and choose our power up, go ahead and scroll this up a little bit. And right here, we're going to go ahead and set this on item picked up as well. So now our item picked up will actually change the values on top of our counter, as well as it is automatically bound to our stat creator, which is great. We don't have to try and event bind anything. And we'll go ahead and just push changes just to be sure. So here in game, we go ahead and see that that value is actually changing. Now, something I do want to point out is that because the actual stat counter is connected to the actual stat creator, you'll notice that once we actually get to level five, it'll actually stop counting. So that's kind of a cool little byproduct. Next, let's go ahead and add in a button and talk about some of the caveats that can happen. So first off, let's go ahead and set this up in a way where we can actually get at it. And what we want to do is set it up so that when the player actually presses this, it's actually going to pick this sucker up. Now, the problem with that is, and you saw it at the beginning of the video, is that we see a V effect on this thing every time it's actually activated. And as of this recording, we can't turn that V effect off. Even if we go ahead and select that specific one in here, we don't have access to it. So it's a bit of a bummer. A way to get around this is to go ahead and bury this way underground or just put it somewhere where the player can't actually see it. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Now, the other thing that we have to be aware of is that if we want to go ahead and just bypass this, we can actually set it up so that the button is directly connected to this specific counter. Now, here's the caveat with that. Currently, this counter is being activated by this specific power up and this specific power up has a magnitude of one, meaning it's going to give us one point every time we go ahead and hit it. If we go ahead and set it up so that this button is connected to this same exact counter, we have a bit of a problem because inside of this counter, we have an override value and this will give us zero points every time we go ahead and press this button. So what that means is if we want to get one experience point for every time we actually click this button, we need to go ahead and set this override to be one. And if we do that, now what happens is that this will give us one, the override will give us one, giving us a total of two, which ends up being a problem. So just kind of keep this in mind if you're trying to use both of these in conjunction with only one counter. You will actually need one counter for each one of these specific devices. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and set our override value on our stat counter back down to zero, so it's where it was before. And we'll go ahead and set it up so that this power up can actually be picked up when this button is actually selected. So let's go ahead and set this up down here under our pickup. We'll go ahead and add in an array element here. Go ahead and set this for on interact with the button. So now what's gonna happen is the player can actually interact with this. It will go ahead and pick this one up, which will then send a signal up here as well as over here, allowing us to control both of these devices with this one specific thing. The caveat being that we'll be able to see this unless we bury it into the ground, which I'm not gonna worry about right now. So the last piece that we wanna go ahead and add is the VFX. So let's go down into our content drawer and grab some VFX. I'm going to just grab a VFX spawner and let's go ahead and put it somewhere where we'll be able to see it. I'm going to go ahead and change a few values. So the effect type, we're going to just change this from continuous to burst. We'll leave this as small explosion and I don't need any kind of audio. So I'm going to just turn this one off for right now. And down here at the very bottom, I'm going to go ahead and set this to restart, noting that our enabled on phase is set to always. We'll just continue to restart this every time the player goes up a level or the player actually reaches their maximum level. So under restart, we'll go ahead and set our element here and go ahead and choose our stat creator. And then underneath this one, you notice that we have our on level up. So every time the player reaches another level, it will set this VFX off. Or you could actually set this up to do something within the UI too. Not going to be covered here. The other that we have here is on reached maximum. This is actually the maximum level. It's a little bit mislabeled. Maybe in the future it'll actually be fixed. So let's go ahead and just do this on maximum because I don't want that V effect going off every time I get a level. I just want it when it reaches the final level, which in our case is level five. So what we're expecting is that I will be able to actually press this button. It will actually pick this one up. We'll see the V effect. We'll see the change up here and this thing will keep track of the change as well. And then finally, when this reaches its maximum level, it'll actually set off the V effect that we have here in the background. So let's go ahead and push changes and test it in game. All right, so keeping an eye on the my levels down there in the bottom left hand corner, as well as the counter up there in the center, we should be able to see this all work together. So let's go ahead and one, two, three, and the level goes up. Perfect. So we'll go all the way up to level five and we should see that the effect. So perfect. We know that everything is actually working. 
So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and use the stat power up device, the stat creator device, as well as the stat counter device in conjunction with a few other devices to get the results you're looking for within your games. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below. We'll get back to you whenever we can. And of course, don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.